This is Dave Putz from JKP Holdings. As I'm sure you're already aware, we provide some great tools, resources, and available assets. We have a great Facebook page and a Facebook group. Within the Facebook group, you can post questions, get answers, and see the latest information in the note space, East Coast Distressed Note Investing. We also have events inside the Facebook group of our previous and future Facebook Lives. We have a resource list that has agents, attorneys, servicers, and whatnot, where you can turn to to get information. You need to contribute one resource and then check your email for direct link. Our available assets can be great gained by filling out our NDA. Simply fill it out and we will review it to give you access. Our weekly Facebook Lives and webinars are held on YouTube. You can access it through our website at JKP Holdings slash webinars. You can also sell your note and let us know more about the information by going to our sell my note at JKP Holdings. We have a great due diligence platform where you can go there, provide information on our property, and we'll give you data, agents, and local rental comps. Consulting. If you have questions about a specific deal or questions about notes that you want one-on-one -on -one conversation, feel free to reach out to us. And last but not least, check out our beginner video series. 20 videos, all there for you to review, check out, watch again, and ask questions. We look forward to having you join us. Dave Putz here from JKP Holdings. Alongside me, as always, Mr. Nathan Turner. Hello, hello. All right. So, Nathan, summertime has come around us, involved us, escaped us. I'm not sure how much I like all that stuff going on. Um, but at this point, I feel that I hate when summer passes. We talked last week about this. Yeah. But it brings up a new wave of interesting stuff going on. Um, the fall brings probably my favorite weather for me in Jersey. Um, it's not too hot. It's it's really, really nice. Um, but it also brings that time of hanging out with the kids, hanging with the family. Yeah. And juggling what we're doing in note space. So Nate, yeah. can you share a little bit about what you're doing? What's going on with you? Well, it's, it's really interesting. You, you know, you talk about the dog days of summer and it's a real thing uh, and everything kind of slows down and business kind of slows down and then you get back into fall. And, and one of the most exciting things about fall is you get to the end of, end of fiscal years. Uh, and a lot of the times that means a lot of product coming available and, and uh, some purchasing that can be done, which is always fun and exciting and good to buy new, new stuff. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to some of that. Uh, School started for my kids two days ago, and uh, you know, it, I I don't know how the weather knows this, but first day of school, all of a sudden it cools off, and it cooled off a lot. We've got that hurricane tail end of the hurricane; it's pulling down the cold air uh, for us, and then we'll we'll warm up again next week. But that made a dramatic difference for us. I hope everyone's okay on the yeah. hurricane front. Everything's safe, and everybody's okay. But it, Interesting. it was crazy because it went right past where we're at. Um, yeah. It was 25 minutes or so just oh, wow. west of us. Um, a lot of our friends, um, you know, talked about how they either escaped or they know someone who got damaged by it. And oh, we got wow. hit by Sandy just, you know, many years ago, uh, feels like many years ago. And we got the, we got some of that damage too. And it's just, amazing to see i mean knowing that south this is almost like they are prepared for it we're just not used to it yeah um, yeah so it's it's i get the fact that people are doing you know dealing with what they're dealing with and it sucks it we does. saw houses ripped off and for us watching it from afar like watching it you know where um you know down in texas or in florida it's like, oh yeah, it's far fetched situation. Mm -hmm. But at the end of it, it's not. 
Um, no, and especially when you've got interest in those states, um, hopefully everyone's well insured and hopefully the insurance works the way it's supposed to uh, and everyone can get back to normal as quickly as possible. But it's uh, certainly a time where it's it, there's difficulty in there. Anyway. You know, it sucks. But <laughs> on the note space, did any of your properties get hit by any of this stuff? Anything going on with that? No, I was okay. I've got a few uh, down in the area, but nothing close enough where there's any damage or anything. So that was, that's good. I did have that last year. I had a property in Lake Charles that got hit twice last year, yeah. uh, but a month apart. Gotcha. I got my insurance payoff for that. And we've done our insurance uh, podcast here. And so if you need a reminder on that, go, <laughs> go yeah. watch that one, but it's well worth it to be insured. So insurance is a crazy thing because we always have a debate, you know, do we insure or not insure? Um, or for because how a lot much of times, all that. Yeah, like yeah. claims being held, claims not being held. Um, a lot of times I don't feel it's worth it at times. But, you know, luckily we haven't heard from any of our borrowers of any mm -hmm. issues except for some small things um, that they're probably not going to file a claim on it. Um, like, thankfully. Yeah, so, yeah. For us, it's just been a weird scenario. Um, and we're kind of hoping that things kind of calm down, but we're still in hurricane season. This is still a time period where we're dealing with stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And we're dealing with people, you know, we're dealing with a, actually a few of them right now of borrowers passing away. Yeah. And in, in the, you know, how do you juggle that? You know, where do you go with that? Where do you handle, how do you handle that? Right. Um, how much do you push? How much do you not push? Yeah. Um, we have a property in Alabama and the bar was like taking two months to respond to things. And it's like, okay, listen, I understand the grieving process, but if I was Bank of America, where would I be? You know, we have a yeah, hard, but we have to be thinking, you know, kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're also preparing for the change of shift of what's going on in the world of, money coming into borrowers hands to pay their bills and all these forbearances and some of that pushed off where do we go with that you know and how do we handle that do we help people do we not help people in juggling that kind of conversation well and what does that help look like is that uh does that help look like a bailout or does that help look like uh uh you know help Good getting question. into another place where that they can actually afford you know yeah there's all yeah. kinds of ways you can look yeah. at that yeah we're so, also going into uh to conference season yeah <laughs> looking forward to that so conference season has always been there i guess to a point but yeah. at the same time we never like we talked last week we have never been that excited so we're excited about two things right now the shift of the market that we don't know what's going to look like in six months mm -hmm and the ability to kind of reconnect with everybody and talk, right? So I think the combination of the two is exciting to see how everyone's going to play it. How is everyone going to handle it? What are they going to do about that? Yeah. So interesting enough, the state of the market right now is very, very interesting. Um, we're coming out with some, some stuff, and you can always check our YouTube channel. Our portal is going to have all the resources, so I'm hoping to keep that up to date for everybody you know, of servicers and uh, contractors and insurance companies and everything else that you need in the forced place insurance to ramp it up for the speed of what we may be in, in mm. six months or a year. Yeah. On top of that, having the ability to know when conferences are at will also be on the portal so that you can know where to go, when to go, how to go and feel confident about it. I know that um, you'll be attending some, I'll be attending some, and we'll be doing some live kind of feed from there, uh, which would be awesome. So state of the market is interesting and conferences are there. I think it's almost like a perfect storm for us, right? It, it kind of is. It's it all of that is necessary. And and if you think, you know, I've heard about conferences and yeah, maybe it's not really for me. Uh, man, I cannot even stress enough yeah. how important it is to get out there and, and to talk with people. And those face-to-face -face conversations are huge. Yeah. And and we've all been stuck not being able to do any of that for a long time and, and we're doing our best over Zoom and things, uh, but there's really nothing like the, the real thing. We've said before, right? We, I've never been to a conference that I regretted going to. Never. Yeah, true. Even yeah. I didn't have intentions, 
I got there and I'm like, whoa, it's awesome. Yeah. So the state of the market's huge. And one of the one of the people in the space that has a handle on it, we've had him on before, Mr. Bob Repass, right? From Colonial Funding, Hard Note School, and running Note Expo. But before we get into the conference talk, Bob, what is your thought process about the state of the market right now? Where are you guys thinking? Where are you guys going? And what's your thoughts? Well, first of all, Dave, Nathan, good to see you guys. That was some interesting topics you covered there. I'll be glad to chime in on a few of those. Sure thing. Um, you know, obviously it, it's kind of generic when we say we're coming out of, you know, some uh, unprecedented times, but, you know, that's, that's what we have. And it was interesting, the point you were made, making about, you know, what's going to happen when this government assistance mm. pretty much stops, right? Um, and, you know, we've heard, you know, eviction moratoriums be extended and then ruled unconstitutional and reinstated, forbearance plans expiring. You know, when this all first started and we knew there was there was MPLs before the pandemic. <laughs> okay? yes. So it's not like everything was rosy. Well, all they got was just pretty much a reprieve from a foreclosure action, right? Yep. Well, the initial reaction in, in our minds was this is going to be completely different than 08, 09 because the real estate market's on fire. So the values are there. So the amount of properties underwater is going to be nowhere near what it was back then. Right. Right. So you would think people could sell their property and pay off the loan or maybe refi, you know, if they somehow work through their forbearance plan. However, as this kicks the can down the road, 12, 18 months, if they haven't been making payments, that equity gets eaten up with accrued interest and yep. everything else that raises that total legal balance. All of a sudden, all that equity protection everybody thought people were going to have, we're a little bit on the fence on, you know, what is that really going to look like when some of these banks and um, larger capital funds look to move some of this product? Because in my opinion, they're not going to want the reputational risk of being the ones to be the first ones to foreclose. They would get the Hey, fellow note investor. Are you looking to learn the basics of note investing so you can get started? However, you don't want to spend a few hundreds or thousands of dollars and hours online on some training program? Have you thought about attending a notes conference? However, you don't want to spend the money or the time away from your family. Well, we have a tremendous beginners video series of 20 different topics with each video being less than 15 minutes. This means each video is less fluff and direct to the content. Visit www.jkpholdings.com slash beginner dash series to learn more. Again, www.jkpholdings.com slash beginner dash series loans off of their balance sheet push it on down the waterfall where it comes down more to smaller capital funds and let them work with the borrower to keep them in the home or proceed with the foreclosure so we think there's gonna be some good opportunity there yeah and you know i was listening actually um for those who are interested it, it there's great information with note school um yeah. i was listening with uh, one of the note schools a couple uh, few weeks back um and one of the angles that i hadn't thought of was uh, all the rental properties and and i think i had assumed and maybe other people assumed it as well that a lot of rental companies or a lot of rental houses are owned by companies mm. uh where you know the vast majority of those are are corporately owned the total opposite is, opposite is true uh th yeah. almost three quarters of rental properties are owned by by people not by yeah. companies yeah, I mean, we're, you know, they're mom and pop landlords, right? They have one to five rental units. Yeah. And there's probably, like you said, over 70% of the rentals are owned by somebody like that. Yeah. How are they making their underlying mortgage on their rental properties when they haven't been getting paid rent? Well, that's it. Right. And um, in last month's, you know, we, we issue a monthly newsletter and um, I always write some editorial opinions in there. Um, to me, I thought the CARES Act and getting stimulus checks to people, I mean, that relatively was pretty smooth. 
considering yeah. the government was involved. Yeah. Right. But the rental assistance package, that reminded me of the hardest hit funds. It was a total cluster. Yeah. They, they, all, the government allocated $46 billion and they've barely given out 5 billion of it. Why? Um, because yeah. they relied on state and local governments to divvy out the money. So you got 50 different entities or more, depending on the local ones, yeah. trying to figure out how to get the person who can't pay the rent, the rent money. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, deja vu all over again. They couldn't, half the states couldn't get rid of the hardest hit funds. Yeah. yeah. So we didn't learn our lesson there. I feel for the small landlord. Mm-hmm. I mean, I feel for the tenant, right? If they truly have a hardship and lost their job and can't pay rent, there's money available. And they just can't get a hold of it. So there's going to be a uh, a tipping point where I think the landlords are going to get burned out. And I think you're going to see some of them liquidate these properties. Now, whether to Nathan's point, they get bought up by a, a corporation who wants to just accumulate properties. Um, but their buy box and a lot of those eye buyers are not the working class people that are struggling to pay rent. They're, they're looking for some higher dollar rental property. Yeah. So we'll see how that all shakes out. But I think there's going to be, there'll be some opportunities there and there'll be some people looking to liquidate some of their assets. And I'd like to see them turn into seller finance notes and, and try to sell those properties and, and give yeah. somebody affordable home ownership. Mm-hmm. Because, yeah. you know, if we can turn some of these, and it may not be the same tenants that, you know, couldn't pay the rent, but they can turn these properties into somebody who's a deserving homeowner. That's always the option I like to see. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's interesting you say that because I think that the rentals are going to be the hit hard situation um, factor. I think a lot of the single families that we dealt with back in 2010 and so aren't going to be hit as much as these rental properties. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've heard some whispers of what rental properties will look like in the near to far future. It may be completely different. This may be actually a push to go to that because a mom and pop investor may not be able to say, listen, I ain't going to take this chance again. Do we think COVID is going to be around next year? Who knows what's going to happen? Let me get out. Mm-hmm. And who are they going to sell to? Yep. So. And um, I got a good friend of mine whose father lives up your way in, in New Jersey. And he's got eight rental properties. And they cash flow really well. I was, you know, they call me up and say, hey, can you help my dad? He really wants to get out of being the landlord. Yeah, And I went through his, his information and he's fortunately the people have paid their rent and he's below market rent, but he's yeah. like, it's just not worth the headache. I need to liquidate these properties. So I'm going to help him do that. But he has been a, a long time. I mean, he's owned these properties for decades and he's just now at the point where he's like, you know what, even though my guys are paying I, the stress of hoping on the first of the month, they show up with their rent check. I'm out. You know, he's, you know, retired and he's like, I'd rather just cash out. And he's not the only one. There's a lot of people just like him all across the country that thought yeah. the rentals were their retirement. Yeah. yeah. And now they're, you know, now they're a little bit skeptical on that. So um, I think you're going to see some activity there as well. Yeah. So a lot of, uh, a lot of opportunity forthcoming and, and when and how and how much and all those kind of questions, who knows? Uh, we can we can guess and we can kind of <laughs> pontificate, but there's really no way of telling uh, what that market's going to look like. What we do know is there are a lot of those out there, and and we'll see what public opinion is and and how people are feeling as things go on. Yeah, I think it's important to uh, keep your finger on the pulse of what's going on. Yeah. You know, whether it's you know watching stuff that No School puts on their channel or what you guys put on your channel, or whatever. Yeah. Just being in the know because you're the ones who can pivot faster to know where the opportunities are, the ones that are going to one benefit, not only in their business, but help other people benefit. And, you know, like I said, keep people in their homes or give, give them a graceful exit and get them into a property they can't afford or whatever, but you got to be ready. Cause if you sit back and wait for it to come to you, you're going to get passed by. Absolutely. Good point. You know, cause many people who were weary about non-performing loans, 08, 09, 10, got into it later missed the opportunity of buying all those loans at such a cheap price that, you know, they could still make up for it, but they missed the opportunity, which is a shame. Um, I wanted to piggyback on something Nathan said yeah. earlier. Um, made a great point on 
exciting part of the fourth quarter is people's fiscal years are coming to an end. Mm -hmm. And whether you're a bank or, you know, a hedge fund, a capital fund, you're trying to re you're trying to balance your portfolio come into the quarter, end of the year. And if you have certain reserves or you have certain hurdles you need to maintain in your fund, sometimes the only way to hit those is to liquidate some of those hmm. non-performing assets. So exactly. um, I thought that was an excellent uh, tidbit that you shared there, Nathan. I would have kept it a secret, just, you know. <laughs> kidding. Um, yeah. but no, that Still got to be in the know of where to find these guys and how to get them. <laughs> exactly. But no, that, that is one thing when we build our model is that we always look in uh, November, December, that we're going to have some trades that we're going to be able to have come across our desk. And, yeah. you know, we've had counterparties over the years that we kind of just, we know we're going to reach out at that point in time. And if they have something, we have enough of a track record where we can do a deal. Yeah. 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 It's interesting you say that because, you know, the only way to be in the know is to be connected with people and talking and networking. Um, now, can people sit there and kind of figure things out themselves? But the biggest way is to just point. brainstorm, yeah, right? Just to get together and just, I may put a point, you may put a point, Nathan put a point, but all of a sudden we come up with a brand new point based on the three data points that we all shared together and go, whoa, guys, let's just check this out, right? There's a big push now for the big companies to go after mobile home parks. Where eight years ago, that wasn't even talked about, right? Where that's been a push, but the conversation around it, new strategies, ideas, understanding has been pushed. Um, 10 years ago, notes weren't even how many sellers were there, right? How many funds were out doing it? Mm -hmm. Now look around, right? There's so many different people doing it. It changed the landscape. And the only way this happens is people communicating and networking. This isn't something just one person will fly the, their hat figure out. So I think that networking any way you possibly can, social media, um, phone calls, webinars, and getting together. And spending time deliberately working on your business instead of in the business will change your business model. Mm -hmm. So one of the things we want to bring on today, too, is talking about Node Expo. This has been around for a long time, and the quality of the content is, is, is just as good as all the others, but it also hits upon different aspects of Node Investing, where you guys have a great focus on some, you know, seller finance situations, that a lot of conferences don't talk about different angles and the note school knowledge. Can you share a little bit about note expo and what expectations people may have? Sure. Um, this will be our eighth annual note expo. So we started back in 2014 um, and it has continued to grow. Um, not a surprise to everybody. Last year was virtual. Um, up until then they were always live and we typically had anywhere from 400 to 500 people. Um, and it was just the buzz and the vibe of having 400 people in the same area that all do the same thing. Yeah. And it could be some somebody like me that have been in the business for over 30 years to somebody who's just getting started for two or three months and you're all in the same area and you're learning from each other. You're, you're sharing a beer, you're sharing a lunch, you're sharing a snack during the breaks or a cup of coffee. And all of a sudden you meet somebody from Canada and you didn't even know they did notes up in Canada. And, you know, you, you get to know Nathan, you know, or you get to know some guy from Jersey, right. Or some yeah. old guy from Texas. And then all of a sudden, when you have something that goes on, it's like, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to give Dave a call because I know he invests in that area. What can he, you know, and you just learn and share and, and you help each other. One thing I like to see about the note community itself is just, you know, I like it when nobody thinks there's a secret sauce and I'm not going to share it with everybody. Right. <laughs> I mean, we are a small niche industry, you, you know, 400 people sounds like a lot in some cases, but Compared to NBA where there's 4,000 yeah. people walking around doing that, it's not. Yeah. So yeah. getting to know everybody across the country that does that, there's no reason for me to, you know, not share my ideas and my, my lessons learned so that somebody else in the business doesn't have to suffer through and, you know, learn the hard way, right? And the same thing on, you know, on the other end. I'm not saying just because you've been in the business a long time, you can't learn from somebody else because mm. you surely can. Yeah. But that's one of the goals that when we started Node Expo was obviously we want to provide quality education and content, um, but we wanted to create an environment where people could connect and especially this year, reconnect with folks they haven't seen 
and just build that note community. So you knew at least once a year that more than likely the 10 or 12 people you want to connect with and see face to face, you'll be able to do that. And then on top of that is our exhibitors and sponsors. Because sometimes it's great that, you know, I go to a conference and I see Nathan at the IMN or I see Dave. And, yep. But I may never have really met my loan servicer face to face before. Ooh, right. Nice. And I just keep writing them a check every month mm-hmm. or they take their money out of my check. I don't, you know, I don't get the chance to write it until they take it first. Um, and I never really know them. I may have talked to them on the phone or I may have been in their portal. And, and things, but getting to put a face, you know, to the name and getting to know them and realize that, you know, there's people behind the IRA companies, the loan servicers, the property press, uh, you know, the software platform people. I mean, I think that's what, yeah, another great benefit of an in-person type conference. Yeah, absolutely. I like the fact you said that, you know, even the, 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 the seasoned investors can learn something from newbies, right? I've been in so many scenarios where either I learned or I taught somebody that I'm like, wait, how do you not know this? And I think, and I was talking to Shanti this the other day, and the conversation was like, listen, there are so many nuances to our investment space that we can't learn everything, right? We had a whole webinar about FPI insurance right after I had a debacle, not understanding stuff. Um, Texas HELOC laws, right, are different from everyone knows Texas to foreclose, but you don't realize that if the HELOC, there, there's a there's a judicial part process. And these little nuances you will not learn unless you're networking with people, or, so, or you go through it yourself. And sometimes yeah. that's not fun, and you yeah. can you can avoid a lot of trouble if you get somebody else's experience and go, oh, yeah. good to know. Okay, yeah, yeah. And so, I, I like to see you build your own network you know, through the events like Node Expo. Yeah. And um, I know one of the things, Dave, you're going to be on a panel with us yeah. at, at Node Expo, just about, <clears throat> you know, how you can build your note business on social media. Uh, and you run a very active Facebook group and stuff. But when I, I, I cringe sometimes when I, because I'm in a lot of different groups and I'm like, of course. they're asking questions and not really knowing anything about the person who's responding. Ooh, and, good point. You know what I mean? As far as a uh, level of knowledge, right? It, yes. I don't want somebody's hot sports opinion. I want the truth. Yes. And I'd rather refer you to, hey, but this is a default attorney I use, use him rather yeah. than, oh, I don't think you have a chance of getting your money back. You know, I, we don't need editorial comments. <laughs> yes. We need stuff like that. And I think you, facts. Can, you can weed through that by connecting with vendors at, at these events and things like that. Yeah. And, then you can just pick up the phone and call Nathan and say, hey, you know, and then ask yeah. him a question or whatever. So, yeah. yeah, you make a good point. There's a lot of people with a lot of opinions in space, but you want to listen to those people who know what they're doing and they're they're smart in that space. Right. Don't ask me about servicing. Right. I can give you my opinion about things, but I'm not a servicer. Right. Yeah. We, we all have our strengths, which is interesting because the network of all of us, you know, grows us as a better person. I'm stuck here. You know, just because someone's newer, they may have a strength that they brought into the space that we don't know about mm-hmm. and we're not good at. And that networking connection, one of the things I encourage people to do is reach out to other people in other parts of the country. If you have a property in their backyard and say, hey, listen, don't call the agent. Don't call this person. Call an investor. Hey, what do you know about this area? Mm-hmm. And they're going to say, hey, listen, stay away from it, blah, blah, blah. Can you pull me some comps? They probably have an agent friend or know a value of what that property is. So that connection can over sometimes succeed you because of having that network of people you trust. I mean, you go to a restaurant based on your opinion. You don't go to a, a, an agent and go, hey, can you recommend a, a restaurant, right? So that reviews of another investor who experiences it is sometimes invaluable to me. So these conferences allow you to connect with people all over the country to also know what's happening in the area. Hey, Dave, I have an influx of people moving here. Values are probably gonna go up. Mm -hmm. Those kind of tidbits you're not gonna learn by just jumping on a social media platform, but in the social media platform, you have to be careful who's responding, who's knowledgeable, and what are they actually doing or selling behind the scenes. Right. You know, when we're talking about vendors too, one of the most valuable things that I've, uh, it, it's kind of, it's, here's your, your cheater backdoor approach. So you go to a conference. Um, one of the, one of the vendors that you'll always see there is an attorney. 
Mm. Uh, you can call your attorney and talk to them for 20 minutes, half an hour, and they'll charge you $100, $200. Or you can go to a conference that you've already paid for, go and talk <laughs> to that attorney and do it for free. So just, yeah. just a little tip Ooh, in there. You can, get a like lot that of, one. <laughs> you can get a lot of really good, um, solid information and guidance uh, for free because they're there trying to win your business, but, but they haven't charged you anything yet. So it, yeah. it's, that's a good way to go. And we always say, don't be afraid of approaching attorneys or investors Absolutely. when you go to these conferences. Yeah. I met Erin Quinn at one, and I was like, who is she? Blah, blah. And now Erin Quinn's one of the people in the group that we talk to the most um, yeah. about her questions because she's willing to talk. And we talked before about this last week. You know, I don't care how new you are. You can walk up to Bob and say, hey, I'm Joe Smo. I'm new to note investing. He's not going to push you away. Even if he was at a different conference, the community is such a nice, relaxed, comfortable situation that approaching people in a space at a, like a Node Expo is easy. Mm -hmm. So Bob, who, can you share a little bit about what are the, some of the topics you guys be covering? How are you guys handling COVID and all the kind of questions that people may be having? Well, <clears throat> obviously our, our uh, concern has been raised over the last 30 days, you know, as, as it seems like this uh, Delta variant is becoming more at least talked about. Yeah. Um, but, you know, as far as COVID is concerned, you know, we're following what goes on here in the state of Texas, which I don't have to tell everybody that we're probably one of the more uh, looser states on that. Uh, but also the hotel, you know, the event will be at the Embassy Suites just outside the DFW airport. Embassy Suites is a well-known chain. It's part of the Hilton brand. So there are certain protocols that they put in place. Um, but it, it will be in person. At this time, we have no intention of live streaming any of it just because we want to encourage folks to come. Um, we will record it. So if somebody wanted it afterwards, it would be available. Um, but, you know, we want, everybody says, they start asking me almost, after the last note, I said, what are we going to talk about next year? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, obviously, if you asked me that in 2019, I would never would have said, oh, we're going to talk about a pandemic, <laughs> right? So we try to get the most rele relevant information at the time, right? So note Expo is always the first weekend in November, right? So, okay, we're about 60 days out. So we're dialing in the MPL talk, the social media talk, um, the creative financing. How are we going to, how can we work with burnout landlords? We're going to have some strategy sessions on that. Um, you had mentioned earlier, Dave, that, you know, we don't just talk about, you know, you're not going to come there for two days and just hear people opine on different strategies of how you can become, you know, rich and famous or whatever. We talk about other areas. I mean, we talk about the entrepreneurial mindset. How can you wake up every day, go to your office down the hall wherever you happen to work from and just stay motivated, which is another reason. If you're out there working from home and you're pretty much a one or two man shop, you need to be around people. Yeah. You need to go to a conference, if nothing else for a break. I mean, you, I mean, you need to just get out there and, you know, say hello and meet new people and say hello to your old friends and, and whatever, but you, you need to get out there because on one hand, it's the beauty of the no business you work from anywhere, right? You can be sitting on the beach. You could be in Canada, you could be wherever you want to be. Yeah. That sounds all great and sexy, but then when you realize after you know six months you haven't met any other human being, you know, in the note business, then it's time to get out. So um a couple of years ago, probably about five years ago, we started what we call note talks. So it's like TED Talks, except that that's trademark. So we call them note talks. All right, it's where people get up there for about 10 to 12 minutes and just tell their story, yeah. you know, inspiring the audience about. You know, I got in the note business and I did this or, you know, I was able to provide for my grandkids because now I set up a, you know, a college fund for them in my in the uh, or a uh, self-directed IRA as soon as they were born. So they have this and, and so forth. So we'll hear that um, people that have been working on Wall Street and got burned out and moved to Puerto mm. Rico. I mean, you're going to hear a story like that. Yeah. Um, you know, so we got we got things like that that we're going to hear. Um we have a couple accounting and attorneys like Jeff Watson will be there and he's going to talk about investing in your self-directed IRA and how important due diligence is. And, you know, a lot of people, they have money in their IRA and they decide, well, I'm going to buy an MPL. Well, it gets a little tricky when you buy 
an MPL in your self-directed yeah. IRA because you're not supposed to be actively managing that, right? You, you can make oversight executive decisions. Um, but we all know when you buy an MPL, even if you only pay 20 grand for it, there's going to be more costs. And all that money has to come out of that same IRA account. So it's funny you mention it. So I would say one of the nuggets I got out was sitting in Jeff Watson in a room. And I said, listen, I know that IRAs and all this stuff. I walked out learning something from that one session that I changed as soon as I went back home. I didn't realize that, you know, personally, you can't do a deal with somebody and then do an IRA deal with them. Um, I figured, hey, listen, they're not my spouse, they're not my parent, not my child. We're good. I had to change a lot of my deals because I had a situation where we're JV'd, you know, in, in a company with someone and also personally did with IRA. I'm like, oh. So there are so many little nuggets. I encourage you, experience or not, just listen because you're going to get the information. Maybe a comment that said on the side. Mm -hmm. um, and being around the people, listening to things. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's not to hang out, right? We're going to hang out and go to a restaurant, but but make sure you're hanging out and talking with other investors. And I encourage people, like we said last week, sit with people you don't know. Mm -hmm. Sit with people that you don't, aren't familiar with and just introduce yourself, but also get with people you do know you haven't seen in a while and ask them what they're doing. Um, yeah. One thing we've, we've always done at Node Expo is we've, always had the breaks and the lunches in the exhibit area where the vendors are, right? So we make that the hub of the event. So during the breaks, during the lunches, and during the uh, Friday night welcome reception, everybody is around there, right? So you're able, I don't know, maybe there's 10 people at a round table. I, I think that's what you have, right? So I agree. If you ate with these eight people on Friday, eat with eight different people on Saturday, right? Just meet different people and, and, and network and and we try to keep everybody in there. And then, like you said, at night, you can go to dinner, go do your own thing and, and whatever. But during the day, we try to have what we call a captive audience, so groups. you know, so that they can all get together and, and meet and greet and hear yeah. good stuff. That's it. That's it. So, um, so everyone who's tuning in, um, Bob, can you tell everyone where the conference is at, where it's located, um, where they can get, I'm, I'm going to post where we can get tickets from in the feed. I'll post it on the YouTube channel as well. Um, but where, when is it, where is it, what location we're going to, and um, what can they expect for investors who are new walking in the front door? What's that experience going to be like for them? Okay, well, first of all, it's November 5th and 6th. All right, we say it's in Dallas, Texas, but it's really in Grapevine, Texas, all right, which is, if you've ever been to the DFW airport, if you go out the north exit, it's like five minutes away. Yeah. All right. It's at the embassy suites there, free shuttle, uh, probably a $5 Uber ride, although these days it might be $7. Um, embassy suites always gives you a free breakfast in the morning, which is always great. Um, so it's at the embassy suites. And if you were to look, it's the DFW Grapevine Hotel, um, November 5th and 6th. It runs from about 8.30 on Friday to 4 o'clock on Saturday afternoon. Um, some folks will stay over to Sunday because uh, Dallas Cowboys have a home game. They're playing in the Falcons. <laughs> you know, that's one that we put a W by already. So we're hoping, oh. that, we're hoping we say that. Um, but if this is your first event, I mean, you're going to come in there. And, and to be honest with you, I mean, you may be a little overwhelmed. You know, you go to the registration, you tell them who you are, you get your name badge, you get a, um, a tote bag from our friends at Paperstack who are sponsoring the tote bag this year. And um, you'll get that. You'll see the, the exhibit hall doesn't open on Friday until 10 o'clock, right? So we want to get you into the opening session. Um, and one thing we do during our opening session is um, we present a lifetime achievement award to somebody who's been in the note business. OK, so we've got somebody that probably everybody who's listening has heard of. They're not related to our business, to our company in any way, um, but their their company is well recognized. And anyway, I can't give it away. It's supposed to be a surprise. Um, but anyway, that's how we kind of just, you know, talk to somebody who's been in the business a long time and recognize that, you know, their, their contribution. So that's that's the way we kick it off. Um, then we have our keynote address, and, and this year it's going to be Sean McClowski. He's from St. Louis. He's a real estate investor. He's a entrepreneurial, motivational speaker. I mean, 
He's not going to get you to stand up and do jumping jacks, but he's going to get your blood pumping anyway. He's a very energetic guy. Um, by that time, the exhibit hall will be open, and then you'll be ready to enter that. And Again, you may be overwhelmed. There's going to be 25, 30 booths to go to. Um, but you just work your way around, and you yeah. go, I'm on the loan servicer. I'm going to go talk to Ally. I'm going to talk to FCI. I'm going to talk to Security National. You know, whichever other ones are there, and you're just going to work your way. You're going to look out for, find Dave, find Nathan, yeah. uh, say hello, and, you know, you'll meet people, and then you'll say, hey, let's grab lunch, and then you'll go back to exhibit hall at lunch, sit down at the table, and um, just get to know a lot of people over two days. So that sense of overwhelming will be gone within the first 30 minutes. But, yeah. you know, when you first get there, just come on up, and if you've been there before, you know the drill. So just let you have a note, usually have a name tag on there. So utilize that name tag to kind of look around and see if you recognize a name, maybe online or a servicer you talk to, or just somebody you've spoken to before. So just recognize things, you know, make sure you have business cards or some kind of way to share your information. I know there's... Let, let, let me add, for, let me add, yeah. we have a Note Expo app. So That's, when you're there, you can register on your app and you can put your name in there and you can say, make it available to share. So if you're on there, it's kind of like a directory, right? If I can look up Dave Putz, I can ping you and say, Dave, I'm going to be at the No School booth during the break. Come see me. Mm -hmm. And you'll have that. So you'll be able to look at the role. And as long as that person register, you know, puts their yep. name in it, we don't put it in form because some people may not want it on there. But if you let folks know, you can say, well, let me see if Nathan's here. And then you find mm -hmm. him and you say, Nathan, I'm here. I'd love to meet you at the registration awesome. desk at 10 o'clock. So it, it's, it's kind of like a networking app. It also has the agenda on there. So it's like, oh, I want to go hear Bob talk. I better be in there by four o'clock or whatever. Um, so we do have an app. Um, once you register, I think about 30 days before, we send you the link on downloading the app and entering your information. They'll have a list of all the speakers, all the sponsors. It's, it's, it's a pretty slick app. Yeah, that's awesome. And guys, I definitely encourage you to get down there. I'm going to be down there Thursday night. Um, I think I'm leaving Friday evening or so. I'm just juggling my schedule and all stuff. Uh, we have something Saturday, Sunday afternoon, so I'm just trying to figure it out. Um, get down there the night before if you can. Um, it's a good conversation. I'm sure people will get around the, the restaurant bar area, just kind of socialize um, and reach out to us. Um, granted, there'll be circles of people talking because we'll kind of be circling up. I'm sure you'll see that. But nudge your way in. Just, mm -hmm. you know, hey, guys, we'll let you know if we're just talking private talk or not, right? But just nudge your way in and say, hey, guys, I'm, I'm Bob Smo and whatever, or I'm Sally. I'm, I'm new to here. Just want to get in. And I guarantee you, you can get in there and talk to us. It's just what it is, right? We just connect to each other. I haven't seen Nathan in forever. I haven't seen Bob in forever. And yeah. we're going to talk and say hello, but no problem coming in just shaking hands with us. Yeah. So set that up, make sure you get part of it. So um, it's awesome. Bob, I think that I post the link in the feed, all that stuff, so people can get in there. Um, if you have additional questions, feel free to reach out to me, reach out to Nathan, or reach out to Bob. Um, all the different social media platforms are available, um, and you can check out the, the event online. Bob, I appreciate you coming on this Friday afternoon. It's actually nice in Jersey. It is a holiday weekend. Um, I look forward to kids going back on Tuesday. Um, I know your kids are, your, your area of Texas, they go back a little early tonight, but my kids are out there like playing basketball and keeping busy. My yeah. kids get up and go to work every day. That's <laughs> right? So uh, I, I'm, unfortunately, I'm through with the, uh, the school yeah. age kids. And uh, maybe one day I'll have some grandkids that go through that. Uh, but right now, both, both my kids are uh, adults and they are living the dream. Yeah. I, you know, I know, Nathan, your ki you have younger kids, too. Nathan, your kids back in school yet? or Our kids started two days ago on the first. Gotcha. So they're they're in and they're actually enjoying going back and being in person and all that kind of fun stuff. So it's been good. I often forget that your holidays don't merge with ours all the time. <laughs> it, it, you know, it depends on the school board. We've got our school board starts on the first. The other school board starts uh, day after Labor Day, but and whatever. Yeah. All cool. works out in the end. Well, Bob, I appreciate you coming on here, uh, tuning in and checking out what we got going on. Um, and being part of what we're, we're trying to do is keep that knowledge and experience with people so they can know where to turn for information. Yeah. We're in conference alley now. Time to jump in and get your hands dirty, introduce each other, swap information, and just get out there and network. Awesome. I appreciate you guys having me on, and I look Pleasure. forward to seeing you in a couple months at Node Expo. Yeah, Absolutely. you bet. Thanks so much, Rob.